We're breaking with our regular series to bring you a rare in-depth interview with a man who's no stranger to controversy and doesn't seem to give a damn what people think of him. Clay Higgins has gone from cop to congressman and along the way did things law enforcement officers don't normally do, like the way he delivered his message in Crime Stopper videos that earned him the name the Cajun John Wayne. If you look him up online, you'll find no shortage of articles condemning Clay Higgins as a far-right conspiracy theorist, peddling in crazy, unfounded ideas about January 6. Then again, these are the same people who told us Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation, and President Donald Trump was a Russian spy. Simply put, they often lie, and we don't care what they think. We know we've been deceived about January 6 because the narrative has shifted. For example, we now know from court cases and the FBI itself that the Bureau did have undercover assets on the ground. That's one of the reasons we wanted to speak to Representative Higgins. He's one of the few in Congress who's challenged the insurrection narrative from the start, and as a former law enforcement officer himself, knows a thing or two about investigations. Powerful people who dominate the flow of information don't want you to hear what he has to say or what he's learned over the past two and a half years. That alone seemed like a compelling reason for us to find out. This is a letter from Benny Thompson, who was chairman of the January 6th Select Committee. And he sent this uh, to TSA, to the Honorable uh, David Pekoski, who's the administrator of TSA. They want a briefing on efforts to address the travel of white supremacists and other domestic terrorist groups, options for quickly denying air carrier service to individuals posing a potential threat, and uh, current status of efforts to identify and add to watch lists. How far does this go? That letter was the beginning of a executive action by the TSA to use its authority to instruct uh, America's air marshals to track and follow Trump supporters that had been charged with no crime. They were guilty only of, of arriving by air into D.C. on January 4th, 5th, or 6th. And those, those manifests were turned over to the FBI. The FBI went through those manifests. And every American that they identified, that the FBI identified as a Trump supporter that was on those manifests was added to the FBI's suspected domestic terrorist watch list. The FBI created a profile on those people, a suspected terrorist profile. And then and the, the TSA administrator used his authority to instruct the air marshals of America to track those Americans wherever they fly. And still today, it's still happening. This is who our air marshals are following, the Trump supporters. And that letter signed by Benny Thompson, who was chair of the J6 Select Committee, and signed by John Katko, the, the, who at the time was a ranking member. Republican. It means the lead Republican of the Homeland Security Committee, advising the, the Pekoski, the TSA the senior guy to use all of that authority to track Trump supporters that had not been charged with a crime, who were guilty only of arriving in D.C. by air. And every time they fly, they're being tracked. That's right. If they have never been convicted of terrorism, why are they on the terror watch list? It's a violation of the First Amendment. They exercise their First Amendment rights, they're being punished for it. It's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. I mean, how many laws does this violate? How many rights does this violate? This is not a free country. You're not a free country where you're tracked by air marshals, by the way, at taxpayer expense. And we're not talking about an insignificant expense. Teams of three air marshals tr tracing people all over the country? Putting, you're putting physical detail onto people? That's, That's right. the most expensive form of surveillance That's that right. exists. And let me say, let me clarify. It's very comforting to Americans to think that there's, and there might be an air marshal on our, on our flight. Not well if they're tracking well you for your God. political but beliefs. But not if they're being used for nefarious purposes. The people that are complaining about this are the air marshals themselves. These are the whistleblowers that are coming forward to tell 
a congressman that they felt would pay attention. This has been like going on since January 21. That's right. And you just found out about it. What else is going on that well, we don't know we, about? We don't know, but I'm telling you, we're in uncharted waters as, as it relates to the weaponization of our government against the American people. I am not frightened of these people. I, I've spent my life serving others, and, and I love my country. This thing is not going to just slip away. They're not going to take us without a fight. I'm going to fight legally and peacefully and within the parameters of the Constitution that I've sworn to serve. But they're going down. These, these men and their high perch and their... their position of power and authority and a walking upon our entire history, our deepest core principles. They're not going to get away with it. They have so far. We'll see. Powerful people in this country, they want to make sure no one hears your, your voice. They want everyone to look at you like a far-right, crazy conspiracy theorist. Is that who you are? No, man. I'm a regular American man. I'm an investigator, police officer by background. I'm gonna continue to speak the truth, whether anybody likes it or not. You've always been controversial. I mean, even when you were in law enforcement, you did those uh, Crime Stopper videos that went viral. People loved them. You got a lot of heat for them too. The Gremlins 